like I said, yeah, so it's recording. Uh, the mic's right here. But like I said, uh, I've been trying to get this thing set up, but I'm I'm close. But I think the room, I kind of like that. Like I was telling my wife earlier, it's kind of eclectic. It's got a little bit of everything that's going on in my life a little bit. The hard part is I'm wanting to do a different show, like a racing show too. But I haven't figured out my avenue how to make that all work. I don't just put everything racing on this side. Well, I think... Scoot the table over. Yeah, just flip it. Yeah. Some guys that... Well, man, first of all, thank you. Because I know that you're, this isn't like your jam to... Uh, you can actually forget the camera's actually there and just talk to me. And you'll forget here in a little bit. It's actually kind of fun. But um, so you obviously know I'm a big podcast fanatic. So I actually start my own. It's fun. But what I found through, I've got a lot of inspiration through the years of listening to podcasts. And um, yeah, we're not famous, but there's a lot of people that know us too. And what I found is people get inspiration through hearing people's story. And so you and I just so happen to be in the landscape business. And I've actually got to watch your journey um, over the past, how how long has it been now? And since I've been at it full time, this will, in March, will be my fourth I was going to say starting. five. Yeah. So step step me back. Uh, take me back to the beginning. How how did you get here? Let's start let's start there. Well, I think I I took the same path of a lot of people. Like mm-hmm. uh, literally just started mowing, and uh, I have a corner lot, and I was always outside. You okay. know. So like all my neighbors stop talk to me the alley i'd be out there you know doing something in the driveway whatever they stop and talk and uh my next door neighbor started with her single mom you know was like do you ever want to do my yard and i was like i guess you know i'm out here might as well so i did it it was like you know 25 dollar yard you mm-hmm. know just like everybody else plus as a neighbor you know you don't you know weren't really thinking about making money so it started that way, and then another neighbor, then another neighbor, and then I started thinking of it as, well, if I do enough of these, I'll pay my vehicle, you know, pay a, a car note. So it started that way, and it just kept getting more and more, and uh, literally until uh, I never really thought of it as a business until at work I was passed up on a job opportunity that I thought I had been working for, towards, for now, years. working towards at your job or a job that you were working towards? At my the, job. At your job. Yeah, yeah. So I've worked for city governments for 13 years whenever I quit. So at 13 years in, at this place I was at, um, maybe five years in, somewhere around there. And... Uh, You know, a job opening came open that that I had been wanting, and uh, it just didn't pan out. So, so did that push your decision to say, "Hey, I'm going to do my own deal." Because if my memory serves me correctly, thirteen in, you've got money wrapped up now yeah. in being with the municipality, right? Yeah, yeah. So at uh, seven more years, and you can retire, basically. Seven years away, and you said, "F it." I'm yeah. going to go do my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my dad told me I was crazy because, you know, he retired from a city with 32 years in and he was like seven more years, you know, and you can retire or whatever. And I was thinking, well, you know, I'm thinking just mowing and I'm like seven years, I'll be 42. I don't want to be starting my lawn business at 42 when I can start it right now. So, and I was like, I can always go back to the city if I want. It'll be there. You know, Mm -hmm. cities aren't going anywhere. So, um, I took, that's when I told my wife, I said, I'm going to turn this, you know, little side gig into an actual business. What was that support? What was that support like with your wife? Cause you're going to have your critics, but she's going to be the number one. You know what? She was, uh, a hundred percent behind me from when I told her that. And she was, she asked me questions, you know, whatever. But, uh, I was like, well, I think I can do it, you know? And, uh, so it took me from when I, when I made that decision, it took me like three years to actually. Additional to that. Yeah. So let's put some context in this too, a little bit. 
You're 13 years vested into the city. Mm -hmm. You're seven years from retirement. You're married. And you have children. One. 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 And one on the way when I left the city. So that's a heavy decision still because being there, you've got medical benefits, steady job. I think that that's why I wanted you to have you on most because I think it's a pretty... It's an inspiring story because it's ballsy because you're a lot of guys that are in that situation like you are comfortable oh, and they don't yeah. break free. They go, ah, I'll stay right here. It's it's real comfortable mm-hmm. because, you know, we all, it was a joke amongst, you know, people is like takes an act of Congress to get, you know, to fire someone from the city once you're in, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's true, not true, you know, but I mean, uh, yeah, you get really comfortable. And, and it's easy to be comfortable. But I was one of those people that was always working towards something. Mm-hmm. So that's why that's why it hurt so much when I didn't get that position. Because I felt I had been doing now, all the steps to get there. If you had got that position, do you think you'd be where you're at now? No. No. So, still- I, told, so I told my wife, I was like, uh, you know, there's this picture of like... Jesus in front of a, a little little kid, and he's taking the little teddy bear away from the kid. Mm-hmm. You know, he's asking for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But he's got a huge one behind him. Like, you know, give me this, and you know, like something bigger for you is coming. You know, but you don't know that when you're giving it up. Like, you don't know it when it happens. So, on a scale of like one to ten, how nervous were you knowing like you gave your resignation? Because I know you're still good with a lot of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how terrified were you? Like, how real did it get when you were like pulling out of there for the last day? It wasn't real until I showed up at, at my shop that I rent from a buddy of mine by myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, (laughs) I gotta get to do this all by myself right now. Cause I had no buddy, you know? Yeah. But in my mind, I was like, I'll start this. I'll, you know, I'll run by myself for a little while. And then, you know, hire somebody or something, you know, maybe months in. And that lasted like two weeks. I was like, I need some help. Need that <laughs> so, fast? Yeah. So you, you pondered the thought of being on your own for three years. So during that time, um, did you have an idea? I mean, you obviously thought you'd get into maintenance. Mm-hmm. Were you building on your business during that time as well? Yeah. So what I, so what I started doing was getting more and more properties. I had a number in my head. I want 75 properties before I leave. That's a lot. Yeah. So we were doing it every day. Me started off with just me and then me and another guy from work. He, you know, asked and told me, he's like, you ever need help? Let me know. So then there was me and Carlos and then it was me, Carlos and Brandon. And then it was like me, Carlos, Brandon and Will, you know, every day after work, after work. So you go put in your eight, Five days a week, and then you, you guys what work like a seven to four shift or something like that. We would get off you at four, city three, three in the summer. Yeah, okay. So we'd, we'd come in earlier in the summer and get off at three. And then you go work till dark. And how long? Okay, so three years. Yeah, almost three years of doing it like that. I mean, it. Uh, I started just getting more and more properties. The running, the joke with the guys, you know, throughout the day, they're like, "How many properties we got today?" And I'd be like, oh, we only got seven. And they were like, all right, that means 10. You know, Seven after work. Yeah. I've mowed yards. I started mowing yards. That's a that's a hump, Jack. That's a full day. Our, our uh, best day, we did 16 after work. Oh, my God. And I mean, there was four of us. And not 16 in Rockwall. That's leaving Rockwall, going to Wiley, and knocking out 16 properties. Not even like a local demographic. No. So it, it, it was... Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. Um, then I started getting so many properties. I started subbing my yards out to other people because I wanted the 75. Mm-hmm. So I started subbing my yards, even though I wouldn't make a dime off of them. I would just turn around and give them the money because I knew whenever I left. That you'd have that. I'd have so that. So you're building that equity. Mm-hmm. So you're pretty much a proponent for anybody saying I can't start a business because I have a full time job that they're full of s. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, we all know we have we have plenty of time. Mm-hmm. It's just 
you know how you want to utilize your day yeah exactly so uh, got a baby on the ground got a wife at home now you're working that kind of workload work-life balance at home what was that like um dude you know i give all the credit to my wife my wife like maintained everything <laughs> <laughs> dude my, my my wife maintained everything at home uh but when i get home i give like i try to give 100 percent like every time i get home you know like um so you, you completely disengage with work and you're at home with your kids. Yeah. So like my thing was get home, do the family. We'd, we'd always try to eat dinner together. Didn't always work out. Right. Especially in the summer. But I'd get home and, and like, you know, we put our kids to bed at a certain time. We try to do that. Um, sometimes I was there. Sometimes I wasn't. You know, if equipment breaks down, then you're there even later. Um but the weekends, I always try to save it for them, you know, like spend the whole weekend with them. Um, even now, just, I mean, just today I started something, you know, I told my oldest daughter, I was like, you want to wake up earlier in the morning? She's like, no. I was like, what if we woke up earlier in the morning to play a game or watch a movie together or something? And she was like, Okay, you know, like like so, why, Dad? Why yeah, is this so kind of creepy, Dad. Yeah, so I mentioned it to her last week, and then she was like, "Okay." She's like, "What time to wake up?" You know, I was like five, five thirty. I said we can watch part of a movie and then start, you know, getting ready for school, work, whatever. And she's like, "Okay." Well, I'd mentioned it last week, last night. She was like, "We're gonna wake up early tomorrow, or what?" You know, like. Oh, why are we not? Yeah. So, and I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, don't forget. And I was like, I won't forget, you know? So she's like, shakes my hand on it, you know? And I was like, all right, cool. So I woke up this morning, woke her up and I was like, you ready to get up? And she's like, no, no. <laughs> and I was like, so did you want to get up and play a game or watch a movie or something? And she's like, yeah. So she got up, she got up and we started watching Dumb and Dumber, you know, like, and laughing about it, you know? great when your seven-year-old gets some Out, of it. <laughs> outside looking in, I think that of all people that I know, you probably have the best handle on that. And do you, I mean, is that something that you recognized early on being a dad? Or is that something your mom and dad maybe instilled in you that family was number one versus a business? I mean... Definitely family is always number one, like growing up and everything. It was always, a, you know, the way we were brought up. But... If it weren't for my wife, I think I would drift because, I mean, I'm sure you know, like running a business, like you want to do all you can do and you, like I'll tell my wife, I'm like, if I wasn't married, didn't have kids, like I, and I'd done this, you know, when I was younger, I'd, I'd probably drive myself crazy though. Like mm. it's good that she's there because she balances everything out for us. Does she work? Or not? Yeah. Okay. So she's full-time job as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, she pulls me in. Like I start, you know, working more and more or something. She'll like, hey, what's up? Now, yeah. does that ever bother you? Like, I mean. Oh, it, yeah. I yeah. Mean, when she pulls no in No disrespect, but I'm just saying like, because I, I think that if you have the true business, if you're vested, one, it can be very rewarding and fun. Mm -hmm. And so... I find that I'll get caught in it, not because, not be, not that I don't want to be with my kids or anything. It's just I'm engaged and I'm I'm fully locked on, and I have a hard time. It becomes an addiction in a way, okay. like pushing away and going okay. And so, but you say your wife, because I I'll butt heads with Kim a lot, and I don't mean to, and then I step back and I'm like, oh yeah, she's right. Okay. Yeah, that exact same same boat. I mean, same scenario. Uh, because time, like, so we talk about love languages, my, my wife and I, and like forever she thought hers was like time mm -hmm. and, and it really is, it's a close second for her is time. Um, she likes to spend a lot of time together, you know, and not just like us and the family, like we need our own alone time, you know, too. And so, um. Uh, Definitely. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It's it very is, hard. It's hard to do just the family thing and then just do y'all too. It's, it's hard to keep over that. A lot of it is. So talked about, I wrote some notes down because mm -hmm. I had my buddy on Tim McKeithen uh, last week 
And I listened to the podcast again, and I was like, I just talked the whole time. And I was like, damn, I don't want to be that guy this time. So I wanted to listen to you talk more. Um, yeah, we talked about years in business. How'd you come up with your name? A uh, buddy of mine. Because you're, always... you're a Mexican, not a Mexican. That's right. And it's about Chief Landscapes. And, and uh, a buddy of mine always called me Big For Chief. the record, I'm not racist. We have a really good relationship. <laughs> I love this guy to death. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to put on the Channel 8 News for that comment. Mm -hmm. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but no, uh, Royce always called me Big Chief, and then it just kind of carried with everybody. Oh, so like Big Chief from Street Outlaw stole your name. From, oh, yeah. Yeah. See, see, well, I think he is older, but he probably came up with I it think after. he's a Native American, too, though. Yeah. Whatever. I think he is. But I like the name Big Chief. And so not only do you have one business, you actually have two businesses. Yeah, we started a barbecue catering. Uh, my wife and I, and Daryl and Kathy Drake. So like, okay, all four of us kind of put our hands in on it. Um, this Thursday, we're actually going to go. You know, give a sample of all our and not all our food. We're just taking a few things, but uh, for the Dallas North Tollway or the NTTA. So, like all the management people are going to come and like try everything they're having a bunch of vendors out of whatever or so we're one of the 40 different vendors now do you feel like that's the dna of a business owner entrepreneur to want to do more than one thing i mean do you find yourself constantly like thinking about things and i guess the second part of that question do you think it's good or bad to do multiple things as an entrepreneur uh, i think it can be both you know like it's it's tough i get frustrated you know doing both in what when, like whenever I feel like I have too much to do. Okay. Like in the summer. I mean, you know how it is in the summer. Brisket gets put on the side. Oh yeah. 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 So it's like I would I, I get mad. Me and my wife will be having conversations and like sometimes when I get home, you know, you just want to check out and not talk business. Mm -hmm. But with the barbecue thing. That's her business too. Yeah. So she's gonna talk to you about so it. So she wants to talk about it and I'm like, I've been I don't want to, you know. But uh, but it has to get done, and and so we have that little argument, and then we get it done. And oh, it's nice to know you're human. <laughs> wow, no, I think somebody I read an article one time that women say get they speak seventy thousand words a day, and then men speak twenty thousand. So we like kind of chew ours up during the day, and then we get home and we don't want to talk. I'm a, I'm bad about that. Kim's yeah. like, you just answer words in one words. I'm like, yeah. I'm Tired, man. It's over. I mean, how many conversations do you have a day? A lot. And it's like, nonstop. Yes. And and I forgot one time I looked at like text messages, phone calls, and emails. 200. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easily. Like just, and it's crazy to think about that, you know, it's like, cause it's a, it's a quick 200 messages, but how much time did you put in thinking yeah. each time? And like. I totally believe the, um, who is it, Steve Jobs and them, like they wear the same clothing every day. Because it cuts down time. Yeah. Well, and thinking. Yeah. It's one less decision a day. He's, they were super smart. I'm not that yeah. smart. So I'm like, I, I even try to do that, you know, like I'll try to line my clothes out on Sunday for the week. I'll hang jeans with a shirt, jeans with a shirt, you know, like, so like Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, like. You're headed down an avenue that I think is important, um, preparedness. So obviously when you were working on your building your company in that three years, when you went out on your own, did you, what was your plan? Did you have a plan put together kind of how you were going to hit it? Did you go from the hip? Went from the hip. That surprises me, yeah, uh, especially from a chef. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, it, you know, I thought I had a plan, yeah. but it was like, you know, just go to work. Like, man, I wish I had read some more books about like running a business mm -hmm. before I had left. Now, what would you tell said new guy that want to get in the landscape? Would you just go go from the hip, or would you say no, right out of plan? Yeah, right out of plan. Okay. Uh, at least have one in mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what you gonna do on Tuesday? Yeah. What you gonna do on Wednesday? I mean, like. Just knowing business more also, yeah. like uh, there was a book that I discovered after uh, two books, you know, one was like five things to do before you quit your job. 
<laughs> it's like running a business for dummies. Should have read that. Right. You know, Twice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was a book called the the E Myth. What's uh, that? I never so heard. it's entre- entrepreneurial myth. Okay. So and it's like like how why, great it is. Why most small businesses fail and what to do about it. Yeah. Well, there's a landscape contractor. One. I'm I'm working on one. So go big or go home. <laughs> yeah. And you go home with yeah, quite well, a few days. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh man, what am I doing? You know. But uh, I wish I would have read those two books for sure. Because uh, man, they would have helped. Helped like, prepare now, like a a guideline. You, I, I think you could make a case that for anybody getting into business, whether it be landscaping, outdoor living, construction, whatever. But it's pretty much. I would say a cookie cutter, but all businesses, I, I, I think it, what I'm getting at, it's safe to say that you could probably go and start any other business now knowing being in business, like, okay, I need to have a plan. I need to get in the black as quick as possible. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hemorrhage the company, go out and buy a bunch of stuff and get into debt because that's really wrong. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I think it's fair to say that. So I think the new guy coming in, what would you tell... A new guy right now wanting to get started in main, just lawn mowing. How, how does he get started? What does he do from George's per- perspective? I mean, just to start mowing, I mean, you can just start on that. But definitely, um, Would, like, like I always tell people, it's like save some of the money. Like, because some people, you know, they'll go make the 25 bucks and then, like you say, they're spending okay. the 27 Cut you off, but and then take off of this. Would you have him start a full time job and then do that on the side, or would you just say, "Hey, just from the get go, start mowing"? No, no, you, I, I would do it on the side first, like, um, and because you're just gonna have big gaps of time, mm-hmm. like if, because then you're gonna be spending all day looking for work, and that could get depressing getting so many no's, no's, no's. Uh, and honestly, I feel like we grew so much so fast working in the evening when people were home because you're out mowing and some guy comes home and he's like, hey, how much would you charge to do my yard? That's actually a pretty insightful tip there. Dude, big time. That That's what helped us grow so much because we would have short days and there would be three of us mowing and be like, all right, we only got four yards. So two of us be mowing and it was like, hey, go next door and, you know, and not- see that guy out there, go talk to him, you know, and just give him a card, give him a card, you know. So we'd have short days and it's like, all right, let's just walk down the street in the neighborhood we're already working on and just start handing out cards. And you can usually catch people outside playing with the kid or whatever. And, uh, and it's not invasive. It's just, hi, I'm George. Yeah. Here's my card. Let me know if we can mow your yard. And you turn around, he's like. Well, wait, wait, how much? And then yeah. you go back and he's like, can you do it right now? And then yeah. you just start signing up. We even mowed yards for free. Really? Yeah. Like You're offering value. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, uh, I mean, for there was one that uh, always sticks out in my mind. I mean, we'd see old people out like doing stuff. So we'd go over there and go like they'd be mowing or, or blowing or something. And we'd just go finish it for them. And they're like, what are you? I'm like, no, nah, we're just, you know, helping out. We're right here, so we'll help you. Uh, once there was a guy playing basketball, with like, you could tell it was all the neighborhood kids are at his house. There's like eight kids over there. And the dad's playing. The wife was out there, too. It's like, just, you know, having a good time. Yard needed to be mowed, so we went and mowed it for him. And the guy was like, well, I don't need you to mow my yard or whatever. And I was like, dude, we're going to do it for free. And he's like, well, why? I was like, man, you're spending time with your kids, all these other kids. We're going to give you back more time so you don't have to waste time on your yard. We'll give you some time to spend more time with your kids. And the guy was like, are you serious? You're making me feel like a real piece of shit right now. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, you know, but that's things that you can do when you're starting and you have more time, though. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to do now because... We're always short on time. Yeah. You're, you know, uh, but when you get more people and then you have more time, because it's funny, it's like you're you're down here, but you got all this time. Then you get up here and you got no time. And it's just like everything ebbs and flows. Mm-hmm. But if when you hire somebody, you're actually buying more time, like more time to do more stuff. So, like, when you hire somebody, you can go do 
one or two things like that again. Because we've done it, you know, when I had two guys. You know, we've, I saw some guy push mowing this, you know, grass that's like this tall, you know, and it's a, just a small field, you know. We just rolled in there and didn't tell him anything and just rolled Skag off and start mowing. I said, you start mowing and I'm going to go talk to the guy. So if a guy were, a guy wants to get started, you would say, yeah, and I, I know all this, I think I'm doing this more for a viewer standpoint, but, you know, keep your day job, try to write up some sort of plan. Does a guy need to go down to Four Brothers and buy $10,000 for the brand new equipment? No, I, I think that would be... Mistake number Big two. Mistake. Yeah, because what if you do it for a season and you don't like it? So you know, if you had, if you were to start like, over, how would you go source your equipment to get going? How would I do what? Source your equipment. Okay, so you need a twenty-one. You need a backpack. You need a, a weed eater. Dude, and you I can was, actually throw all that in the back of a truck. You yeah, don't have a and and I did that. Like I I uh, I I had all Home Depot stuff when I started. You know. The Toro mower from Home Depot, self propelled that three two one, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I had the uh, the worst weed eater known to man that with the curved shaft. Oh, Not good. You're, you're like yeah. bent over like this, you know. You might as well pick it yourself. <laughs> uh, I had no blower, you know. And and the the biggest thing is like, dude, like you you see people out there and they have like a crew and you see people with everything. And then you're there with your truck and your mower and, you know, nothing. And you see that. And then the ego is talking to you. Yeah. Like you, you're like, man, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's, and sometimes it's, it's almost like embarrassing, you know? And I remember leaving work one day and some guy was like, how many yards you got today? I was like, I only got one. And he's like, dude, that's not even worth it. Oh yeah. That right there, like made me want to, like go harder, you know. Was there anybody around you outside of said guy? Was there anybody around you that was maybe knocking the idea of you trying to go be your own guy? Oh yeah. How'd you deal with that? Uh, well, they never said it to me. You heard heard it third person. I heard I heard, always heard it third person from different people. Uh, my thing was like, all right, I'm just gonna make him a fan. Okay. And, uh, and so that's what I worked on, and dude, it, it I did. Like, did work for those people. You know what I mean? Like, good work. So, um, because of that confidence now, knowing you, are you are you afraid to fail in anything that you tried? Oh yeah, always. Okay. I mean, because I mean that bottom line it hurt. Well, <laughs> you know, maybe like, not so much that. What I, I guess that it was a it was a loaded question, but I think that guys like you that have started up, you you build confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Um, so now that you've gone out in the world and you've got it done, you kind of know how to do it. What I guess what I'm saying is like, you could take the, you could take the barbecue, for example, you, you could apply your time and energy in that, but if it didn't work out, I don't think you would worry about the haters as much as maybe you did back before you started the lawn. Cause I think you build confidence, understanding that there's peaks and valleys and you know, I'm going to give this a try. Yeah. I think what I'm getting at that is there's probably a lot of people right now, even, you know, and I think the big purpose of trying to do this podcast is from an inspirational standpoint. There's a lot of guys on sideline, a lot of guys that don't want to get into it and won't do anything and whatever it may be. I mean, they might, they might build guns or be a guitar guy, you know, who knows? But I think a lot of those guys are on the sidelines because they're scared about that guy that they know about is going to shame them into not, you know, people are scared to, to fail. I mean, what do you say to that guy that's on the sidelines that's saying, man, I don't know. I mean, man, you just got to do it. I mean, you, the last thing you want is regret not doing anything. True. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, how many of us have said, oh, we're going to work out this year and we fail and we fail and, you know, I'm still failing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but you, it's, it's that simple though. Like we, we fail over and over, but you keep going, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so, I mean, you're going to fail. You're failing if you don't even try. Okay. So I mean, it it's it it's easy to fail that way. It's easy not to do it. It's easy to lay up. Yeah, because uh, people are gonna be like, oh yeah, George is you know he makes great barbecue, but like I don't know about if he runs a business. You know, like he, I don't think he can do that or whatever. So you just 
stick to, uh, I'm just going to, you know, backyard it, you know, let everybody come over and tell me how good I am. And instead of sticking your neck out there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you really have nothing to lose really. I mean, so somebody says something about you, you know, like it, it, it sucks. It does suck. You my, know, when people say stuff, but my dad said something to me one time that's always stuck in my resonated with me. He said, What what people think about and say about you is none of your business. Yeah, big time. And I don't like I don't know why that stuck with me, but it had and and I think through the years it's allowed me to get a little bit more calloused into taking chances or to to failing in front of people because I like you, I, I realize I don't want to live a life of regret. I don't want yeah. I don't want to lay down it. Hopefully I'm really old, but I don't want to be lying there going, man, mm-hmm. I could have done that, but I didn't. And what here we are, and it wouldn't have mattered. And I think that uh, I think more people should just give it a shot. And maybe you don't have to make a public announcement you're doing anything. Just no, just start doing it, you know, yeah. on the side. And it's and it's almost after work, <laughs> and it's almost your duty because like uh, I forgot who it was said it. I don't know if it's Grant Cardone or somebody, but the, it talked about like That's if your you boy. die, yeah, yeah. If you if you died and you went in front of God and He showed you and be like, all right, well, this is everything that you did. You you know, you I know, know you know it was. Who was it? This is David Goggins said that. And this is what you could have done. Yeah, yeah, it was Goggins. David Goggins said that yeah, in his last book. Yep. So yeah, dude. I mean, imagine getting there and them showing you what you could have done, and you look at it and you're like. Dude, I screwed up there, there. You know what I mean? <laughs> My list is going to be really yeah. long. Yeah. I mean, like, what you could have done, like, that's, that one stuck to me. I remember who it was, but I just remembered it, you know? I was yeah. Like, I, I just told my brother that the other day, you know, like, but that one right there. So, being in business for yourself, I'm getting a lot of phone calls. That's the only downside with having a cell phone recording is that it goes off and they look. But hey, I'm started. I'm figuring this thing out. <laughs> um, as the years you've been in business, um, what it, what have been some of the most challenging things for you as an owner in in the landscape business? You know, preferably in the landscape business. Um, Dude, for landscape, like going from just mowing to landscape. It's just well, like, I'd say, let me uh, back in. What's been the most challenging thing being your? Let, let's just put lawn and landscape in the same package. Mm-hmm. What's been the challenging part of you being in business, doing what you're doing? Man, uh, I think everyone would probably say the same as cash flow. Okay, like uh, that's the hardest part because then you'll have so many dollars out. Yep, and you're like scratching to get something in, and I mean, it hit me hard. The first couple of months, because uh, I got a call from uh, from a place that I worked at, and they were like, you know, we need help with this contract or whatever. Can you help us out? You know, five week gig. I was like, all right, cool. So I call a buddy of mine. We kind of split it, and we go hard for five weeks doing this. You know, well, I had you know one employee and myself and then i had to get all the guys that i knew to come help literally saturday sunday for five weeks and i was having to pay everybody every week like you know so you had five weeks of outbound cash yeah with no return and then you were like hmm yeah and it's a 30-day turnaround for that first week of pay you know that first paycheck of doing that contract so i'm here waiting you know 30 days and i'm paying these guys so we would mow, do our regular schedule, me and the other guy, and I'm hustling up cash. Like I'm like trying to find extra work to come up with like the two grand that I need by Sunday. To pay the payroll. Yeah. So I did that over and over and over. Best lesson ever. Like it was the best. It made me feel like oh, I can do anything. You know, I came up with two grand a week. When I like, no, you had to. Yeah, and uh, and I did it, you know, and those same problems have come up, you know, throughout the years or whatever. It's different dollar amounts. Now, yeah, but but uh, I feel like I can, you know, go out and make stuff happen though. Like but, when your backs against the wall. You know, I've been around you now for a while. Um, you seem to be a guy that lives well within his means, and you seem to be a guy that likes to save. 
Uh, both of those, and we've talked in private a lot about that. And I think that um, I, you know, my story is pretty. I've, I've become pretty open about my story that I, I lived large for a hot minute and really put myself in a spot. But I think that if said guy was to come into business, I mean, the the, the one of the things that I think we would both say to that guy would be, you know you want to scrap as much as you can for as long as you can. Mm-hmm. You, you don't need a shop. You don't need a fancy brand new four door lifted jacked up truck. You don't need a brand new trailer. You need to try to scrape by as much as you can, probably for the first, I would say three years. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's a little long, but I, I think that you and I both agree, like save, 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 save. Like today yeah. it's raining and snowing. I mean, there's been, I know I've had days in the past where I was biting my nails on days like today. Oh yeah. Cause I needed to get yeah. the job done yesterday cause I needed the money to pay for X. Mm-hmm. Fortunately this year I haven't been an idiot and I'm not <laughs> sitting at home freaking out, but I, I changed the way I ran my business. And I, and even to this day, even with the economy that I'm seeing, I, I still see a lot of guys, I, I got guys owe me money right now, but in, and, and I'm like, I know what you're doing. Like you, mm-hmm. you're hemorrhaging money, and you're living high, and you can't pay. And now here you are. Yeah. And that's a dangerous, it, dangerous thing to get into. It it is, man. Like, uh, and it's easy to do because you get a check, and you're like, oh, I'll get another one tomorrow, or I'll get two weeks from now, and the, and then like for me, uh, for me, you know, like there's, I have three guys now. I have four, and I got three. But it's still like, I still get nervous. Like I'm always nervous, you know, like it, I don't know why, but it's just a habit, I guess, more than anything. I don't think it ever goes away. Yeah. It, it I, I wish it would. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't like being stressed out, buddy. Oh, yeah. I mean, because it, it's, it's, uh, it's a bad feeling all the time because you, you feel responsible for your guys, you know. Uh, this year... I had more guys going into winter time than I than I ever have. Like every year, it's a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, trying to you know figure out what I'm going to do, you know. And but in for me now, like I've I've gone through a lot of changes, and I'm like I always leave it in God's hands. I'm like He's going to present opportunities, and that's what I always say is like God's not going to be like, oh yeah, that guy needs to win the lottery, you know solve all his problems no god's going to give you opportunities it's your job to take advantage of them so when opportunities present themselves i try to jump on them as quickly as possible so that i'll be okay you know and i've done it in the past where we get a good job done you celebrate too long you know yeah like you celebrate that win yeah and you feel it a month later mm-hmm. and you're like oh shit know like Uh oh there's a big gap here yeah i've got two weeks before the next thing starts off yeah we're washing trucks for a week this is not this is not this is not good so i mean it it, you know yeah i wish that part would you know i don't you know i heard um of course i'm a big rogan fan and i was listening to something he said one time and he said once i identified that it was always going to be hard then it got easier. I heard that like two years ago. And I was like, okay, so it's always going to be somewhat stressful. You know, it's always going to be like, in, in business. Yeah. You know, in this, it's all, you're going to have these peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. You know, and thing that I was talking like Tim last week, and he's starting out next year, and it's, that's the guy you need to get with and network with. But I, I was telling him, I said, um, I've, you know, I've done this for 18 years. I go into winter every eight, every year going, well, how's this going to work? Yeah. But here, yet here I sit. It's always worked out. Mm-hmm. And so I think that if you can get your head wrapped around the fact, well, one, if you're not a moron through the season, you can save some money, you pay all your people off, and you're not have all this debt. That helps. One, <laughs> That's yeah. a big advantage. But then I think, too, if you get to the point in your mind, because... Like this morning at breakfast, I was reading, uh, as a man thinketh. Mm-hmm. And I think you reap what you think. You reap what you sow. If you think doom and gloom, it's what's going to be presented to you. And if yeah. you think positively and you, and you sit down and you work, I, good things are You have to do the work. Yeah. It doesn't magically just come to you. 
you know, I sat down and wrote a prospect list this morning and I was like, okay. And I sent out 10 emails and I made the phone calls. And, uh, and I think if you're consistent with that, there's never any issue. But I think, like you said, you hit that lick and then you're on easy street for a minute. And all of a sudden it gaps and you go, oh golly, yeah. uh, we need some work for real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's your, what's your thoughts on hiring family and friends? That one makes me nervous. Like, um, you know, I've, I've hired friends to help here mm-hmm. and there, but not necessarily. Uh, and it's a tough one. Like, Would uh, you prefer just to hire somebody that you don't know and then work you, them? I think that's easier. It's a lot easier because uh, it, it changes your decisions. Like, uh, you know, I don't want to say like you'll... People like have favorites or whatever. We're like, oh, you know, this guy, you know, I don't want to make them do this or that, whatever. You know, you don't want to get yeah. caught up. And then you don't want people thinking that that's what, like, oh, he always lets him do this or that, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, like, I feel like everybody that works with me is like a friend, you know, like I don't, you know, we don't hang out on the weekends or anything like that, but I feel really close with the people that work with me. Like, I don't ever say people work for me. Yeah. Like, I, I yeah. it makes me uncomfortable. You have coworkers. You yeah. Don't, you don't have yeah. employees. Yeah. And, and it, so that makes me feel uncomfortable or people are like, you know, oh, this is my boss or something. It feels kind of weird to me. Like, mm-hmm. it always has. Um, so, like, as far as like family and friends, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have any family, you know, I've had family help me, you know, weekends or whatever. People hit me up. Hey, if you got any extra work or whatever like that, but, uh, like a full-time employee, I don't think I've ever. Then you probably wouldn't. Yeah. No. What about doing work for family and friends? I've gotten burned, you know, <laughs> by the do we, do we need to edit this part? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, I got a, I got a rule. Everybody kind of, everybody pays the, the same now. Yeah. You know, I, you don't you give know, anything away. No. And I've done that, you know, I've done it where you do it at cost or something and it ends up biting me. Like, yeah. It know. always does when you do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know and why I mean, it works that way. I don't know. I don't know. A job where you're supposed to only show up for like two days and I end up making like 10 trips, you know, like. My gosh, I shouldn't have done and that. And then they're still know? mad that it didn't work out the way. Yes, yeah. And 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 the job looks perfect, you know, like came out the way you wanted it, but they're sitting here, you know, nitpicking like stuff that Yeah, you know. I've gotten real weird about that through the, later. But I'm I'm with you. Everybody's the same price. I mean if it's yeah. my, like I just did a job for my grandmother. I know everybody thinks that's cold, but I I charge her like I charge the next guy. And that's just because it's clean i know i can take care of that you mm-hmm. know and in in to her she said you know she's like either i pay you or pay somebody else yeah i'd rather go to your kids and yeah. so like okay um and, go ahead it, and real family and friends shouldn't want a discount no you know? real friends you know? pay yeah. for stuff they yeah because they know it's a business you know it's not like you know how hard this is yeah uh, so no family and friends. Uh, got a pretty good guideline on hire or working for family and friends. Um, you obviously upgraded. You've got some great equipment. I've seen how you roll. Um, what about? I think that's where most of my money goes to honestly. equipment. Yeah, like yeah, you've got. I, I don't. I've feel... gone in your little Trevor Trevor che, treasure chest before. <laughs> I was in there and everything's labeled. I'm like getting stuff out. My like, hey, yeah, it's kind of cool. And, and you know, like. Uh, I feel like that's why I feel nervous all the time too, because like most of my money goes towards equipment and I don't, like you're saying that <coughs> buying new trucks and stuff, you know, like my everyday vehicles still your work you know, truck. Yeah. 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 So like, um, one day I'd like to have, that's a goal of mine is like, you want the Porsche. Well, yeah, I do want a Porsche, <laughs> but I'd like a, a family vehicle you right, know, that yeah. I can be like... You want a minivan? I can hook you up, son. No, 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 no minivan, but I'd like I'd like a truck where I can put my kids' car seats in, and I don't have to be like, oh, let me get that 
you know, <laughs> such and such out of your chair. Look at that bag quick. of fertilizer out of the back seat, yeah. honey. No, don't yeah. eat that. And my oldest daughter is like, Dada, there's stuff in my chair. I'm like, oh, yeah, don't. Sorry safety about that. vest and whatever, you know. But one day, one day I'll have something I can. Yeah, but you're, you're four, right? Five? Yeah, we're going on four. They, I, it seems to be to me that businesses really don't, and I hope this doesn't kick you in the, but the, when businesses really start jamming, you're 10. Like, yeah. Like jamming, like yeah. really getting at it. Yeah, you. yeah. And I've, dude, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts too, and, and that's what I've got out of them. Yeah. Ten I don't know why. Yeah. Everybody that, when I started, it was just like at year 10, everybody just went, and I was like, well, okay. And never, but then... Because we were young and dumb, you know, and a little eight. So I started when I was 22. I'm 40 now. Mm-hmm. So at 30, 32, you're still kind of full retard. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm 40 in retard, so I don't get twisted. <laughs> but, uh, but man, it just, it seemed like it just took off. And I, I, you know, I go back to, I talked about this last one, you know, where I, in 17, hit rock bottom, came back. I'm grateful for that now. Because it's giving me the discipline that I need to go on forward. Yeah. I'm a big play it small kind of guy. I like big job stuff, but I'm not I'm not going to get, I don't get fancy anymore. Mm-hmm. Like as, as small and as nimble as I can make it. And everybody that I'm around these days, everybody that I coach these days, the guys that are in my little circle, I just, I scream at them. Small. Like talk to one of the kids I'm coaching today earlier. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm sitting on the couch. I was like, why is that? He goes, because I got money in the bank, man. And I was like, exactly. Because I'm not fretting, I'm not stressing. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know why I got on that tantric. <laughs> Starting to talk where I'm not telling myself I shouldn't talk. Um, on your billing cycle, so maintenance is a weird one. Like when you get started, you typically mow and then you get paid, or you get on these accounts and you get you mow, 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 and then you get paid. Are you on the back end or the front end? See, I'm on the back end. I really want to be on the front end. You need to switch that. Yeah. I I was just literally listening to a YouTube video on my way out earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was about like billing and stuff because I'm, you know, of course you want to change that to get your money first. It's a good time to do it. Yeah. So like three weeks away from the new year. Yeah. So it's like for new customers, the guy was like, if you got them already, you know, used to paying at the end of the month. It's almost impossible to change them over. Some nah. might be okay. And I think the ones I've had for a long time will be okay with it. But that even makes it more complicated. You, know, you got ones you build in front, ones you build in yeah. back. But, but I just I, I started paying for a program now that I'm going to get up and running. So it'll literally take care of uh, the routes that are going to be run. Who are you going to use? Um, Groundskeeper Pro? No. Uh, Service autopilot. Huh. So it runs the routes like you enter in customers Monday or whatever. Oh, and it'll it'll spit them out how they should go. Yeah. It'll it'll give you the fastest routes. The only thing I worry about is like it doesn't take into consideration like I always think traffic. Yeah. Like I like to do They don't know the back roads. Yeah, like Heath on Fridays, we do Heath and on Friday. I want to start in Heath and work back towards the shop. Shop so instead you're of going not, out. So you're not on the other side of 30 at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's gridlock. Yeah. So that's you know, one of the things that I worry about, but I'm like, eh, you figure it out. Software is smart, especially with all the modern advances. Yeah, I don't do any maintenance anymore, but I saw something the other day. Like, there was this, I sent it to my buddy Casey uh, Laughlin, and uh, it's a measuring tool. Like, you, you stick out the front, and you can walk around the house, and, it, and then it grids it. <laughs> From a design guy, I was like, wow. So technology's up. But to speak back to your, um, I was going to say on the, on your maintenance deal about your billing. So you mowed for me for a while. And then I don't know why I fired you, but why'd you quit mowing? Or why'd I quit mowing? I probably didn't pay my bill or something stupid like that. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I think I actually. Oh, now we got to pull this up. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll handle that invoice. Okay. Home about, but, <laughs> no, but yeah. um, uh, Aaron Selden, he's mowing. Mm-hmm. And Aaron bills out at the beginning of the month. And I've had zero issue with it. Yeah. Hits me for a hundred and whatever a month. And then he comes and blows, mows, and goes. I don't see anything wrong with it. I yeah. don't know why. Like, it, it's. And it, some people do. Like, see, and, and this is my thing too, is like, 
Some people do have a problem with it, but then are those the customers? That's not the customers you want. Yeah. Because if the customer, you need to be around somebody who wants to pay you and understands that. Because you got that number of yards out there times four, times four or five weeks of labor. Mm -hmm. That's a money, son. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So, and it, it does, it adds up quick. So, like this new program, it's literally, uh, so it's on everybody's phone, you know, like, or whoever's running the truck, and they just go down that list and complete, complete, complete. It'll send the invoices out. As the they're end, done? At the end of the day, the nice. end of the week. So, you're not missing any month. billing. Yeah. Because that was, to me, the hardest thing is the billing. Sitting down and sending bill after bill after do you use uh part. what do you use quickbooks for yeah. yeah i use quickbooks pro i use it i like that program i'm still it's probably my worst thing that i'm i'm at is job costing and like receipts oh yeah not good at that it, i'd spent all weekend logging and, and and i put it i mean it's there and i mean i tracked it all and put it all together mm-hmm. but i could have done it a long time ago so Good on design, good on install, not good there. I wish I had somebody else just doing that. If I could just ring them up and say, here's what's going on. But I don't want to spend the money for somebody to come and do a job that I'm extremely capable of doing because I'm being lazy. I mean, is it being lazy or are you, you could, your time could be better I don't think you can pick, else. well, I mean, if I hired a girl for like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I don't know. I, I haven't really gone into that. I want, you know, I want to see kind of how this year went. I want to do it, and I kind of like being by myself because I don't get like I can only yell at me. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you could hire a bookkeeper to handle everything, right? Or, or uh, I think there's even like things that you can pay for, like hire, you know, kind of. I like saw the, the other day. Uh, I think and, I saw the other day. Um, I was looking at one of my apps on QuickBooks and it came up, and it's like you could actually hire somebody in QuickBooks, and they'll just keep track of what you're doing. Yeah. And anyway, it's part of my goal going into wintertime. Just gonna, that's the only part I feel like in my business I really – well, be more aggressive in marketing going into next year. And then I want to shore that side up and just keep cruising. 36, 52 jobs again next year and sitting. So what's your yard count up to? See, I don't know. A lot? I, I mean uh, – I, I swear I've sent you 50 this year. <laughs> I feel like I have. It, you know, it, it's funny uh, – I don't know the actual number and people ask me all the time. And I'm like, you know, I know it's over a hundred, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, but some of them are two acre, three acre. I mean, yeah, y'all and, mow a lot and, of big stuff. Y'all don't, yeah, y'all don't play around. I with mean, blue. we do stuff for the city of Roy city and it's like 53 acres. And that takes up a whole day, three days, two and a half days, a whole month. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like two and a half days every two weeks on that one. Um, and then we got, we try to do all our big skag mowing. So we'll take, you know, multiple skags on the trailer so that you're just running that. And then the next day is like, take one off and then do the residential. What, what size skag you running? 62s? Uh, 61s and 48. They don't make a 62. That's Toro. Mm, yeah. 61. And I've got, I've been removed from maintenance for a long time, but I, they, like they've got some 70s and 80s yeah there's a 70 there's a 72 but like you can't the, use it uh, yeah the decks are floppy yeah They're bouncing and scalping yeah you know anytime I mean, you get off kilter it just wears yeah, out a yard yeah you're doing a football field to be great yeah but it's flat you know, yeah but 61 i wouldn't go past the 61 what all diversities did you do see i think a lot of people get in they go i mean the the evolution of lawn typically goes to landscape and that's how we i think we all got mm-hmm. started so you're mowing, and then you get the guy goes, well, can you trim my tree, and then trim my bushes? I, I kind of know where you're at, but the audience doesn't. So what all do you do these days besides make amazing brisket? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we we tell people anything outside, we can probably help you with it. You know, like... Uh, you doing any outdoor living? A little bit. We've done some, but not a lot. Okay. Like, uh, it's so time consuming. It is. So, and they're know, not the biggest profit margins. No, no. Everybody no, thinks right. it's that big number. Yeah. It's not but, so much. But, but like it's the time that it takes, basically. You know, it, it, it takes so much time. So I like to get in and get out, you know, something like that. You know, obviously, of course, I always talk to you about, you know, working together on stuff mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, 
you're more made for that, especially in the summer. We get so busy with just the mowing and the maintenance that we just kind of maintain that and in the winter we'll start to transition and I'll put that more I'll put, put that it out, out for a feeler. Yeah. yeah so. so for the eight months you're doing you're doing lawn trimming, mow blow and go. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any real landscape? I mean I've seen a few, but it seems like you're more maintenance. More maintenance. So more, more maintenance and then as winter comes, then you start to kind of open the doors and say, whatever you got. Yeah. You've done a lot of concrete work this year too though. Yeah, yeah, we did do uh quite a bit. Like we did some commercial jobs and, and stuff like that. I got some other guys that I work with on that. So I mean what what helped was me getting off the mowing truck you know once i had a crew doing that had someone running the crew it freed me up to go do other things mm -hmm. so like even the the trimming of you know light trimming of trees the the bushes and molds and stuff like i'll run and go do all that stuff myself so that they can just keep going you know i try not to slow them down with anything because i've done that where when i was on the truck it was like hey we got to trim the bushes here so it was like, then you're mowing and trimming bushes and then going to the next property yeah. and just put you behind, behind, behind. So now I take care of all the trimming and the, you know, bushes or whatever. So like I keep replacing myself. So I replace myself on the truck. Now I want to hire next year someone to be with me and then replace myself that way. And then, so it'd be two of us doing the trimming, whatever, doing miscellaneous projects and then replace myself there so then it's two other people like keep replacing myself until i get further and further out so where do you aspire to be like we've talked about some personal stuff and i, I think we can stick we'll stay away from that right now but where do you aspire for your lawn your business right now to be let's say at a decade at 10 years where does jorge see himself oh man it'd be great if i was like showed up to work for 10 hours a week just to go over everything make sure everything's good just checking in and out i for me personally like i want five sources of income okay you know so like uh in order for me to just feel better like i don't think that you'll ever be comfortable like you're saying it's always going to be hard it's always going to be work uh, it was really depressing when i saw you know <laughs> they, they did this thing and they were like you know what would make you feel comfortable you know it's like amount of money yeah the guy's like man if i had a million bucks you know and how fast could... it went away <laughs> He's like, if i had a million bucks i'd be so happy you know whatever yeah so then they go to the person that has a million dollars and be like so do you feel comfortable now that you have a million no well, what would make you feel more comfortable? eight to ten you know and it just kept going and nobody it took a person having 180 million dollars for them to be like yeah i'm content i'm like 180 million like, i don't know bro i think i could do it for a lot less but that's what we say until you got it you know what i mean like thinking your business when you started you're I, like well you know. i got i mean this year i got to a spot where i was like hmm pretty cool and then i was like well if i can keep the steam put you know five years on this then we'll all be but the goal for me though was being out of debt i just don't want to have any bills yeah like i'm hammering and uh, i mean i and i i'm about 15 months away from only owing on my house and then we'll just hammer on that and then if i'm out i'm like out because i just i think it's it's kind of the old analogy it's like saying well this guy only makes fifty thousand dollars a year and this guy makes two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year but this guy that makes two hundred fifty thousand dollars spends two hundred thousand a year. Like you're kind of in the same spot. Mm -hmm. So I think if you live small and within your means, then it, then I don't know. Maybe I got it twisted. I just know that I've gone from a spot where I spent everything I had nonstop and was gonna go big. Yeah. And that sucked. And then I changed it around. I was like, I'm gonna live as small as I can. And I've done more well weller better than i've ever done this year you've done the wellest you've i've ever done, done the goodest <laughs> i've done and i don't know if that's an attribute i don't know what I, I maybe it's because i haven't been stressed out this year like that's been a big thing for me from being a business like things are real clear up here because i'm not and there's no stress there's no i gotta go gotta go gotta get this job done to pay for this to pay for that yeah 
Um, but I, I built that. I, that was by design. I just said, here's how I'm going to do it. I've told a lot of people no this year. Told a lot of people no. I didn't want. I wasn't going to do their job. Yeah. And they're like, well, why not? I'm like, because I can't. I can't. I can't shove it in this round. It's a square peg. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's so hard to say no. Like we had that conversation not too long ago. Yeah. Saying no, and it, it it that is man. If you can learn to do that, to thy own self be true. You know it. Yeah. That's what we talked about, man. Like in your gut, you get that phone Dude. call. Can you come do this? And your gut goes, no. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you go, sure. And then you get into it and you're, you you hate everything about I, I got a lot of friends in, in the colony and Frisco and Little Elm. And it's like. Come on up here. Hey, it's only hey, four hour round trip. Yeah. Right? They're, they're like, you know, it, it's a good job, a good sized job, whatever. And I'm like, it, it and it entices you. You're like. The hey, carrot. Right. And then, but then you're like, then you start thinking the tollway, the drive, the, and it's like, no, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it it's not. It's not. Uh, and, and it's hard to say. No. That's probably, I would say that's probably one of the hardest things to, to, cause when you start out, you're, you're like, whatever I can get. Yeah. And if you're true to this deal, you never really lose that. Right. But then there comes a time where you don't need everything. Like, and then you got to, then you got to change your billing from the end to the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to do it, you know? And it's hard to take those phone calls in and finally go, yeah, we just, we don't screw with that anymore. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And you hear people, why not? But if you can get in that lane, that's the guy, the most successful guys that I've ever met find their lane and they stick to it and go, and they don't divert. They don't. They don't get off the path. No matter how much other money is, you know, thrown mm-hmm. at them, they're 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 not going to do it. But it's hard because yeah, it you don't lose that. It's, and I don't know if it's a sense of insecurity or or what that is. But it's it's hard not to. Well, and I think a lot of it for me too is like I just want to help people. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. Sometimes tell like, people yes actually hurts them. Yeah, yeah, and and like so I always feel like. You're, especially with somebody you you know you kind of know or like you want to help them you know what I mean it's something simple you be like oh yeah I could run out to Frisco and just take care of that real quick and it bites you in yeah. the arse yeah, same they, thing they, working they with family it. and friends you make 10 trips to go back there yeah but you know like that's the that's the thing like listen to your gut mm-hmm. when it rains you go well <laughs> you just say no yeah well man what uh what other words of wisdom may you have for someone beginning or doing? Somebody watching this show right now and says, "Dude, if you like can just for me is like continually, continuously educating yourself too. Like always, li- even if it's something you think you, you're like, I would never use that or whatever. But like, listen to it anyways. You know? Yeah, you're a big uh, audible." Oh, yeah. Like, I'll I listen to books. I hadn't done that jam yet. I'm going to get into it. How does that work, actually? Oh, it's... You pay... How much do you pay for Audible? Whatever the book costs. So, so it's like, like $5 a book. a book? Yeah, whatever the... I mean, they're all different. Oh. Just like if you went and bought a book from anywhere. Yeah, well, YouTube's free. That's true. Can you get the same... I don't think you can. You can't get the same books on YouTube that you can on Audible, can you? Uh, I don't know. Because there's been a few times you've sent me stuff, and then I went to YouTube and I found it, but you paid for it. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I should probably I, be too. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay with it only because uh, it stays in your library in your book, I mean, in your phone. So does so, Audible have a, Is it a subscription monthly? No. Okay, so I, I download the app the other day, so I just go to find the book and hit boom. Yeah, you buy the book and it's yours, just like if you went and bought the book, actual book. But uh, so mine stays in my phone, and I can listen to them. How many books do you knock out a week? Um, I I've actually stepped back reading so many Why? books. I've been listening to podcasts. Like okay. I go through phases where I get tired of listening to a person, so then I'll go to something else. Like um, the MF CEO was one of my yeah Andy ones. yeah. So like I followed him a lot, but then. Okay, so this is my thing too. Is like I feel like he's complaining a lot. He's an overcusser too. Yeah, yeah. So and he's proud of it, but uh, 
I feel like he's gotten to a point where he's really complaining. And I felt the same way with, uh, what's the other guy? Little guy. Jets fan. Oh, Gary, Gary B. B. For a long, he was one of the first ones I started listening to. I felt like he was complaining a lot. So then I just kind of. X those out. Yeah. And then something popped up, started listening. And I feel like he's on a different level now. So, like, he's changed. See, and I wasn't a Grant Cardone fan. I thought he was a Chris Chris from the day one. And then I started listening to him and I was like, okay. And then I bought his 10X Planner. Yeah. Which he knocks it out in 15-minute intervals full of day. Mm-hmm. Love that thing. And all of a sudden, I took my 10-hour day and I'm like down to four. I'm like, golly. Yeah. Like, and everybody's like, how do you get so much done? I'm like, because I don't jerk off all day. That's a hard thing to do, too, though. Like... <sighs> See, it's, I went from running, running, running all day, like on the truck and stuff, to having a little bit more time. So it's like trying to control that time. Because mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, like, I find myself finding doing busy work, you know, like stuff. A rough scroll really, on Facebook for 45 minutes? Yeah, that'll kill you. I get zoned in. I have yeah. an addiction to my phone in a super bad way I'm not proud of. Yeah. That, my wife would tell you I do the same thing. But, uh, it, you know, like, uh, so I was l- listening to that guy, and then now the one that Ed Milet, I follow him a lot. I just I just discovered Ed through Sean Whalen. Okay, so Ed Milet and Andy started a business. Yep. The, Arte. Yeah, so. And I missed it. I was going to get in that. Really? My buddy Jason Feltz in it. So I actually went to... Um, Listen, at Great Wolf Lodge. Okay. Took our kids there a couple of days. Didn't they come away. to Dallas? Oh, I don't know. Never they mind. I'm interrupting. Go ahead. But uh, we were there, and I seen a guy with the shirt on. Arte. Yeah. So I stopped, talked to him, whatever. We exchange info. That guy, like, right off the bat, like, sends me a couple of books in the mail, whatever. One of them I'd already read was the, uh, what was you reading? As today? a Man Thinketh. Yep. He sent yeah. me that one. And, um. Uh, Probably sent you, what about the Four Agreements? No. You need to read that book. I read that one. Read it. Oh, yeah, I told you to read yeah. it. Read it you, read, you told me to read both of them. Yeah. So I read both of those books because they're really short. Game Changers. I listened to those over and over. Like, in one day, probably went through one of them like four times. Mm-hmm. Because it's just like, you know, you miss things, especially when I'm working. Yeah. So I'll listen to it over again and again, you know. And, dude, it, it yeah. Definitely. You know who always says to read that book, too? is like uh, Tom Brady. Like, it's crazy how much I hear that book now. As a Man Thinketh? Yeah. Yeah, he wrote that book, died, and then that book is now one of the most influential books. Like, I, I, I don't know how you're a business owner and don't and haven't read that book. I just don't know how you function. Like, yeah. I think every man... I, in fact, those two books, I think everybody in the world should read. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I I I don't know how many people I've told the reason. Definitely, I like, thought about this Christmas. Well, I've thought about this for a while. I was gonna buy like a hundred of them and just give them to people. Like this book will change your life. Read it. I read it this morning at breakfast. Oh, some the the guy that sent it to me, he printed it and sent it to me. So continuing education would be a big deal. Not hiring friends and family. Not working for friends and family. Stick to your prices. Start small. Don't uh, buy a bunch of fancy equipment. Work it part time. Work part time to start out. Yeah, because if you work in the evening, that's when people are getting home. I think we left a lot on the table today, but I want to have you back. So we'll talk about some more stuff next time. All right. I think it was like an hour. I had to keep. I have to keep looking over and checking. Said that little red dot. I was here with Tim, mm-hmm. and it recorded for thirty minutes, and it stopped, and then recorded again. So I've got a part one and part two on my YouTube. Um, Which seems very unprofessional, but I'm trying to get this thing going, so I'm not. I don't care how perfect it is. I want to look back and see how dude, goofy it was. Everybody thought Joe Rogan was crazy for having three hour podcasts, but uh, they're long form. I love it. I absolutely adore this. Like this is my favorite thing to do. I wish we could just keep talking, but only probably reason we're not is because I think that thing's probably going to shut down here in a minute, yeah. and then we'll talk and I'll lose it. But uh, no, I think um, <clears throat> my video guy is trying to help me with some camera equipment. And then, because um, I want to put that, I want to be all like official, put the phones on. I'm like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, this is going to be fun. I'm going to try to get, um, I'm going to get, continue to get more landscape guys in. And then 
I'm probably going to end up doing two shows. I've got kind of a different angle I want to go, but I haven't quite figured out how to make it happen. What's the other show? What do you want to say? <sighs> no, not yet. I've been I've only been thinking about it for like two years, so I'll tell you off air. Oh. Tell so you you're scared to put your neck out there. Well, I'm. It's not. Yeah, what that, if you died right now? Ah, well, yeah, God no. Was like, well, God's if I like, die right now, God's like, you know, two years ago I gave you this <laughs> idea. Yeah. And you never did it, man. I, I've got, I've been whiteboarding. I got some stuff upstairs in the office that I'm pumped about going in this year. But this was one of the things that I've wanted to do for a long time and just kept putting it off. Because, well, and I kept putting it off because it wasn't perfect. Because I couldn't get the mics to work. I couldn't get this to work. Blah 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 blah. Just excuse after excuse. So then. When we, I did, uh, Sean had helped me a little bit. We did some interviewing him and then Tim came on to it with the phone and it sounded pretty hollow. And then I went and got this mic today, 50 bucks. So plug that in. So this is going to work and I'll upload this, send it out. I did get two, uh, I got two thumbs downs on my last video <sighs> and I don't know why that doesn't, it shouldn't bother me for a minute, but it kind of did. I was kind of like, man, why doesn't somebody, why does somebody not like my show? I'm going to go make it three. Make it three, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Put myself out there a little bit more this year. I feel like I've got stuff to say. But yesterday was my first day. I actually was on video. I did a video myself. Did you put it on Facebook? And uh, I was important. nervous about that. You know how many times I recorded? Oh myself? no, the one you did about the toy. Yeah, tell yeah. Her, tell everybody about that. That's cool. Uh, I owe you a hundred. Don't don't leave out without that. Oh yeah, I'll write that down. No, no, but uh, so basically, like a month ago, got an invite, you know, to one of those equipment places for a party Thanksgiving mm -hmm. around that time. But uh, so they have it every year, and you play poker, whatever you want to play, and you win tickets. You put them in whatever prize you want to win. At the end of the night, they'll pull a ticket out, and you win. Yeah. You know. So we won that little John Deere Gator four wheeler with like a dumping bed and everything, and uh, we we're pretty stoked. Me and my wife, and I was like, dude, I was like, Celeste's gonna love this thing because she loves to sit in the driver's seat. You know, we went to the fair. She drove the uh, Hellcat. You know, mm -hmm. with the big screens up. So we did all that. You know, I was excited about it, but then my wife and I started talking about it, and I was like. I like her drive, riding scooters and bicycles better, you know, like, and so we got to talking, we were going to take it to a toy drive and just drop it off. You know, I was actually going to take it to John Tucker's office cause he's got yeah. that one there. Jay Tuck. Yeah. So, uh, I was going to take it up there and then we started thinking, why don't we, you know, raffle it off. I thought it was pretty genius. Money. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to raffle, we're going to raffle this thing off. We only got like 25 spots left. So ten dollars a person, a hundred people, raise a thousand dollars, help five families, two hundred dollars. So how do they find you if they go to just George Figueroa? Is it public? Is that yeah? Has it been shared publicly? Okay. Yeah, because like, yeah, I think it's been shared like twenty something times now. That's cool, man. But uh make yeah, me feel so bad again. Mowing <laughs> mowing strangers' yards and giving toys away. I'm over here worried about me, me, me. I, I know my wife's like, are you going to start a nonprofit next or something? Well, <laughs> I was like, I would love to do dude, that. For I, real. I really wouldn't. I mean, we gave turkeys away for Thanksgiving. We smoked turkeys and gave them away. Like, I think my oldest daughter makes me think of it more because she's like, we're just going to give these turkeys away. I said, yeah, you're not going to ask for any money. I said, no. And she got so excited. Really? Yeah. And she was like, she was like, because these, because I explained it to her. I was like, you know, so not everybody can afford, you know, a Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. I said, so we're going to help them by giving them these turkeys. And she's like, they're not paying for them? I said, no. So she got excited about Like, she wanted to carry the turkey. She couldn't because they were too heavy. She wanted to carry it to the door and stuff. So they went with me, my daughter, my two daughters. Yeah, we need and, to get together on some stuff because that's been tugging at me for a long time. Like, I've been blessed in my life and to not think about I Kim was reading an article the other day and uh, she's and I think it was the, the maybe it was the owner of YouTube's mm -hmm. and okay you're like yeah sure Sounds but good. um they that you know they're gazillionaires mm -hmm. but they took their kids to go do charitable work like soup kitchens and yeah. and they go because I want you to understand 
there's not a, there needs to be a separation like what we have versus what to give. I think it's important, man. Oh yeah. I tell you what, that's why I like going to Baja every year. Not only because it's awesome, but I come back grateful for everything. You know, and it, everybody's complaining about five minute Starbucks lines, and it's like, oh god, dude, man. it really changed me. I went on a mission trip to Haiti. Yeah, that was cool. With the uh, oh man, the bucket ministry. Okay. You know, providing them with clean water. To hear the people, they had already been. Is there that before. that deal they did on the lake? No, 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 that was a different one. Okay, I don't, I don't know what that. The was. wells. Yeah. Something about yeah, the well. My they, brother did something with that. Yeah. Donated some money. I don't know. But I mean, going to Haiti and seeing the way people live, and I mean how, you know, and, and people, I think people in the United States too, like a lot of people we know, and even myself, like growing up, like didn't realize like how close we all are to being homeless. You know, mm-hmm. it's like we lose our job, can't find a job. I mean, you start falling back really quick. You know what I mean? Hey, the guy that we know that does uh, stonework that is not from this country. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say his name. Does he have a green card? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to bring him on the show. Oh, and I yeah. want to talk to him about immigrant mentality. Dude, that guy. He's a hustler. Dude. A He's a handsome piece. fellow too. He is a I don't want to bring beast. him over and my wife might get attracted to him. <laughs> <laughs> that dude is a beast when it comes to work. I dude, mean, he's, he's... I wanted to... I, but I, I thought about him the other day because I'm hoping like each time somebody comes on, I'll like zing off to somebody else. But I, I was thinking about him and I was like, I want to ask him what his thoughts are. Like us Americans are here and we're whining that things aren't going our way and we don't have the big hit, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then to hear his story, I don't... I, and I hope he can say it with not, you know... Because I've heard the story. You've heard the story how he yeah. got here. I'm like, whoa. Dude, and not, and not only that, I mean, he's only been here, you know. Not long. Half of my life. And he's gotten that. after it. Yeah. He went to and work. I mean, the dude has, you know, a, a newer truck, you know, a dually, you know, and I mean, a new house. Grateful for everything he's got, too. Yes. And we squander all of it away as Americans because we're. Oh, yeah. That's what I, that's what I said last time talking with Tim. I said I think we got it twisted. I think the level I think the level of success that we aspire to is we really got it twisted off. Like them little kids, mas more importante. Yeah, yeah. My next thing though, the charity thing. I, I want to uh, smoke like a go- oh yeah, a gazillion. <laughs> <laughs> smoke a gazillion like chicken legs. Dude. And go and go to the bridge, you know, under the bridge in Dallas, and just well, let's do something like that on. together, man. Let's get yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So I get a handful of people Dude, to do that. I had so much fun today. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on. I'm gonna upload this tonight, um, but uh, pass it on, share it, tag. Uh, how do people find you? How do people find your business? I tell everybody about you, but tell tell the camera right there. So uh, Chief this Landscape, is, and honestly, I don't know how to find. Like, I mean, Chief Landscape and Rockwall on, well, on Facebook, Facebook, you should find it like that. Okay. Uh, you on Insta? Yep. We're at Chief Landscaping. Okay. I don't know exactly how to type that stuff in, but... So if you need somebody to mow your yard, full service, how, what's your phone, phone number? 214-924-5349. And our email is uh, Chief Landscaping at Gmail. And then your brisket, your smoke, Chief Smoke Shop. Chief Smoke Joint. Smoke Joint. Okay. Yeah. How do yeah. they find that? Same, same thing on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, same phone number. Cool. Same phone number. Dude. Which, which I wish I would have said. All right, done. So you can sell it one day. Yeah, this is a package. You, Thanks, you guys. You buy everything. We'll see you. <laughs>